figured out you want to make your own animation with a new trending clip studio paint but got lost and confused? Have no worries as I'll be teaching you what to do and where they are. Disclaimer, CSP at the moment does not have the ability to render transparent GIFs. There will always be a background rendered with it. Note, non-EX users are limited to only 24 frames and will have to limit their creation to only 24 frames in one second. EX users on the other hand, have unlimited frames in one go and can increase it as much as they wish. Side note, some steps you don't have to follow dot to dot, but this is my method to have how to do it. You are free to change around the order of some steps as you see fit. The first thing you want to do is open up a new canvas and open the timeline. If your GIF is not going to have a background, delete the layer 1 on the layer panel as it'll be useless. Select the new timeline option and choose the settings of your timeline. Now I may be confusing at first as to what any of these words mean, but the most important to look at is the frame rate. Frame rate is how fast the image is quickly being flipped on the screen. The lower it is, the lower the frames per second, making the image seem slow and choppy. The higher it is, the more smoother and faster it seems. All these aren't permanent, so feel free to throw in a number that'll cover the GIF length. Now, the timeline isn't so empty. You now have what are called cells. Like jail cells, but with one L. Now what I would do next is hit the little option that looks like a window with a red square in it called a new animation folder. That creates a folder for animated related layers in your layer panel. It's basically a folder like in Sci, Photoshop, CSP, and all other drawing or media softwares. Once you have your folder, select new animation cell, and you'll notice a layer appear in the animation folder in the layer panel. This layer is where you'll be drawing your creations frame by frame. So go ahead and draw the first frame you want to show the world. But wait! Here's a little tip. If you're drawing just the arm to move or hand or mouth or shaking a leg only, then there's an easy step to this. Create another animation folder. You could name it static, or you could name it whatever is being standing still in the image. Create a new animation cell, and draw just the still parts. In this case, it's just the ball, not the sun. Go back to the layer that will be showing the moving animation. Once you create the first frame, that you then hit new animation cell again. Suddenly, all your hard work vanished. What happened? Don't worry, it's still in the folder, but think of it as putting a clean piece of paper on top of it. Still there. If you're still paranoid, go and click 1 on the timeline and you'll flip to the frame to the first one you worked on. Now back on frame 2, you want to draw, but are still terrible remembering where the last frame took place, or you want to make it as smooth as possible. CSP also got that covered. Hit the enable onion skin, or the white box on the right of the timeline toolbar, and you'll see your creation. Well, in a different color. Well yeah, because if you see the same thing on the same layer, how will you tell what's in the past and not the present? This is actually very useful, especially when you're trying to fix frames in between. Once you go back to a cell sandwich between other cells, the past is defaulted to a light blue and the future is defaulted to lime green. For now, continue on! Now that you have two cells, or three if you have the still image, you realize most of the moving part can be easily be duplicated and change very minor things. This is to help reuse frames that was drawn before but we can use again in a future frame. So here's a shortcut, just duplicate it. Right click the layer you want to duplicate and hit duplicate layer. But it doesn't show on the canvas! Nani? Nah, it just means that the timeline didn't recognize it as an actual anime layer and thinks it's something else. This is easy to fix. Go to the timeline and right click on the area where the next frame should be. A drop down menu will appear and list what layers exist in the folder according to our layer panel. Select the duplicate layer title and voila, it now shows. Now go ahead and erase, remake, and complete the minor changes of that cell. Now you've learned everything you need to create frames towards a complete GIF. Keep adding more cells until you are somewhat satisfied with what you drew. You can also drag and rearrange the cells to different points in time in a timeline. Usually, this will help you make your motion parts appear earlier or later in the GIF. Now once you get to the point that you realize it's too slow, fast, or not enough cells, always change the settings. EX users, select animations at the top, the actual top of the program, and hover over timeline and select change settings to change the length of the GIF, or change frame rate to change the speed of the GIF. Now that you completed this, it's time to export it. Now if you wish to have this on your stream or on your YouTube video as a transparent, there is a way that you can make it transparent. If this is for personal use and don't care if the background has a white color, go ahead and just hit File, Export, Animation, Animated GIF. Give it a name and it'll start slowly saving it into a full GIF. For those who want to have the transparency, you're going to have to use the program to remove the background using the chroma key. Using this chroma key method, it just requires you to make a background layer with one very oddly specific color to be shown in the back of the GIF. Create a layer outside of all the folders and at the bottom, above the paper layer if you kept that. Fill in that layer with a bright green color. Usually it can be something else, but make sure that the color doesn't match it with anything else in your GIF. Otherwise, that part will also be invisible in the GIF on your stream or video. After that, follow the previous steps to re-export and you're good. I should assume you're good enough to know Chroma, right? It's basically telling the program to ignore a very specific color and hide it. Like hide a mistake you made on a painting and you just cut it out. And that's it. 
Hope you all learned a bit more about CSP Chan and you will know how to treat her right. If this helps a lot, give this video a like. Comment about how weird my methods are or what other tutorials I should make. Subscribe if you want to learn more about CSP Chan or interested in vlogs I rarely make. Also, if you're a gamer like me, I make videos out on my streams I do on weekends and post on my primary channel. Check it out right here. Until then, thanks for watching, have a wonderful creativity session, and stay lazy.